Hi everyone, I'm Pei Han. In this talk, we present an example-based method for continuous curve texture synthesis. Repetitive patterns are common in engineering and design, but can be challenging and tedious to create manually. Our goal is to develop an algorithm and interface to create repetitive patterns. Our algorithm should be able to generate diverse patterns beyond existing methods. Our user interface should be user-friendly. We only need input exemplar and large-scale control. Our algorithm and interface can balance between automatic computation and manual control. The former lacks flexibility, while the latter may require a lot of work from the users. There are some previous works on texture synthesis, such as pixel-based texture synthesis. It is simple and well-established, but image pixels are not suitable for interactive editing. The method might generate broken or merged elements in the synthesis output. Some other works stuck get geometric pattern synthesis, such as distributions of isolated elements on the left. However, they cannot be applied to generate continuous curves on the right. Our algorithm is designed to generate both discrete elements continuous curves, and their mixtures. There are also some previous works on interactive pattern authoring interfaces, such as brushing interface, deco brush, and real brush, vignette for pen and ink illustrations, and autocomplete user interfaces. However, this system target either raster textures or discrete elements instead of continuous curves. Our method takes an input exemplar, samples a graph representation to synthesize a larger graph and reconstruct continuous curves. Our main idea is to extend prior example and sample-based element synthesis to consider not only sample positions, but also their edge connections. Essentially, we are using a graph-based representation. Given a set of passes, we sample the intersection and ends or passes, and they place samples along passes with uniform spacing. Edges are used to connect samples along passes. For each sample, we record its global positions and attributes, which includes edges and local pass orientations. For example, the annotated sample has two edges, E1 and E2, and two orientations, O1 and O2. Our pattern synthesis method is neighborhood-based. To compute a neighborhood matrix, we align input and output neighborhoods. With the approximated graph matching algorithm, Hungarian algorithm, the neighborhood matrix is a graph matching cost. We initialize our pattern optimization with patch-based method. For convenience, we only copy samples without edges. Edges can be assigned to join optimization, but note, our methods can also converge with random sample initialization. Our algorithm optimizes the initial samples to maximize the similarity between input and output graph. Here we show the results after one iteration. The iterative optimization continues until convergence. To speed up the optimization, we, our algorithm runs hierarchically by using denser and denser samples. After synthesis, the vector curves are reconstructed from the output graph. The optimization is performed by alternating search and assignment steps. In the search step, for each output sample, we find the input sample with the most similar neighborhood. This process can be accelerated by patch match algorithm. The assignment step includes position assignments that compute sample positions. The expected distance between two output samples should be equal to distance between matched input samples. By taking all such input-output pairs into account, the output sample positions are optimized with least squares from predicted offsets. 
The Simon step also includes existing assignment, where we want to adaptively add or remove output samples to optimize the number of samples. We use an example to illustrate the process. Here is an output sample distribution. Assume we compute three pairs of input and output neighborhoods on the distribution. For each output neighborhood centered at the red sample, we find its most similar input neighborhoods. Samples with the same colors are matched. White samples are outside of neighborhoods. The black output sample is unmatched with input samples in neighborhood pairs, and thus it is unlikely to exist in the output. There are two neighborhood pairs where each has an unmatched input sample, which indicates there could be a missing sample in the output located at approximately the same location related to its neighborhood center. The unmatched input samples are merged to generate the green output sample. The edge assignments include several steps. First, we compute the expected number of edges associated with each output sample. Here, the yellow output sample is matched with three input samples extracted from overlapping neighborhoods. The three input samples have three, four, and two edges connected to them, respectively. The updated output sample should, have, should be associated with three edges by averaging the numbers of matched input samples. Then, we compute the expected existing confidence of edges. If an edge exists, the confidence is 1, otherwise 0. In this example, the output sample pairs is matched with three input sample pairs. In the three input sample pairs, two of them have edges between the samples. The expected edge confidence is thus 2 over 3 by averaging the input edge confidences. The edge assignment is performed by minimizing the objective shown here. We hope to minimize the differences between edge confidence and their expectations as well as between edge numbers and their expectations. Here we use a toy example to illustrate how to compute this objective. The green numbers are the expected edge confidences and the blue ones are the expected sample edge numbers. Assume E1, E2, E4 exists in the graph. E3 is not. So IE1, IE2, IE4 equals 1, and IE3 equals 0. The first turn loops over all edges and sum over the differences between IEs and their expectations. Similarly, the second turn sum over the differences between the EES and their expectations. Here, ES1 equals 1, as there is one edge E1 connected with S1. ES2 equals 2, as E1 and E2 connect with S2. And ES3 equals 2, ES4 equals 1. The binary discrete optimization problem is difficult to solve. We optimize the objective with a greedy strategy by decomposing the problem into small sub-problems where we compute edges one by one in the loop. The search space of the sub-problem is reduced to two. The sub-problem is easy to solve. Here we show you an example. We start from the edges with the highest expected existence confidence, which is the E1 here. After some computation, we find E1 equals 1 can result in smaller energy. This process is, com in is interactive until all edges are computed. Finally, the graph has edge E1, E2, and E4. For the orientation assignment, we also show an example for illustration. Here, the orientations are updated by averaging matched input orientations. The black output orientation is newly added by choosing the median from three unmatched orientations. 
Without using the orientation attribute, the curve reconstruction is ambiguous. If we only consider different status of the yellow sample, there are two possible reconstructions, A and B, depending on whether the yellow sample is a junction or path sample. To disambiguate these cases, we examine a sample's local orientations. For example, if a sample has a pair of opposite orientations, which are shown in purple here, it indicates the sample is included inside the path as opposed to at the end of passes. Therefore, the yellow sample is not inside the path, but at the end of two passes, which is the reconstruction B. Similarly, if we only consider different status of the yellow sample in the bottom graph, there are four possible reconstructions, depending on the sample is included within which two or three passes. Our method will generate the reconstruction A. Please refer to our paper for more algorithm details. Here we show some results. Although our method can generate some good results, it can contain some inevitable artifacts due to inherent limitations of neighborhood-based synthesis algorithm, such as broken distorted curves. We will introduce our user interface later on, which can be used to correct unsatisfactory artifacts. We compile our method to previous discrete element synthesis methods. Since previous method does not consider edges, they preserve the sample distributions less well than ours. It is also unclear how to reconstruct continuous curve patterns from their samples to our curves. The users can further improve the synthesis quality via our user interface. Our method is integrated into our interactive authoring system, which has two major functions autocomplete and chrome to generate predictive patterns. For further quality improvement and customization, the users can accept, partially accept, or reject the predictions. In conclusion, we present a hierarchical representation and synthesis method for both geometry and topology of continuous and discrete patterns. We pr present an interactive authoring system with autocomplete functions to reduce manual workloads and to facilitate user control. We also have some limitations. Our method may not capture global structures and may introduce stochastic variations in the synthesis output. Our method might not preserve the exemplar curves very well. Our method is computationally intensive. The discrete elements and continued curves are treated separately in our synthesis framework, and thus might not be able to preserve identifiable elements within the continuous structures. In the future, we plan to further improve the synthesis quality. We also want to incorporate more vector graphics features such as colors, thickness, high dimensional primitives such as 3D regions and 3D volumes into our synthesis framework. We can also parallelize the synthesis algorithm and explore more applications in, of curved structures in rapid manufacturing. We want to thank a lot of people for their help in our project. Thank you.